Hey queens, how are you? My name is Wahima. Uh, this is the look that I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'm not going to show you how I did this head wrap, but if you would like to see that, please thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you want to see how I got the head wrap going. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about integrity. I do not like it when my integrity is challenged. Like, it sends a fire through my body, and which the likes of which I've never really felt. I have a video here on YouTube that is very, very popular. And I really honestly don't know why. The camera quality is terrible. Um, and I don't know how it got to be as popular as it is. But it is really popular. And in the video, I say something about a character from Scandal that comes off as me victim blaming. Um, it comes off as me having like a serious judgment about uh, women who are raped or people who are victims of sexual abuse or sexual crime. I know in my heart that I didn't mean it the way it comes off and that within the context of the show, I was responding to something that happened in a fictional program. But for people who don't watch Scandal or for people who are victim of this sort of act, it can seem as though I'm insensitive to this issue, even though I do have several videos about this very topic, explaining that I do 100% support the victim in any sort of sexual abuse, uh, crime, or instance. But I got a comment on the video, and I've gotten comments on the video about, the com about my comment in the video, and I've just kind of been like, I didn't mean it that way, sorry you felt that way, you know, have a nice day. But somebody wrote me a comment and said something that really struck me. Their comment was so nice, and it was basically, hey, I was watching this video and I was really liking what you were doing. Within that comment you made about sexual uh, assault and how uh, what the victim should have done in order to prevent the assault from happening really hit me in the wrong way, so I unsubscribed. And it seemed like you have something pretty cool going on here on this channel, but unfortunately I won't be able to continue watching you, and good luck. And the way the person put that comment made me actually step back back and go, like it didn't hurt my feelings that they unsubscribed, but the fact is is that they thought I had something good going on and that's what stopped them. And I think that's what ma gave me pause and made me realize that even though um, that video has, is, is the video that's garnering the most attention on YouTube, I can't continue to have it up because it doesn't accurately represent me and who I am. And I feel like it attacks my integrity. And I don't want it to be that. And the most, most of the time, anyone who comes to my channel, that is the first video that they see because it's the one that YouTube promotes the most. And it's a bad first impression, honestly, of me. And I don't want that to be my first impression here on YouTube. So I took the video down. And I actually recreated the look, which is what you see on my face today. It's a recreation of that look that I did a year and a half ago that has garnered so much attention, has so many comments. That's not even talking about that issue, but I, the few comments that I have talking about the sexual abuse issue, um, I've kind of just kind of like glossed over because I know what my opinion is on that. But to realize that there is somebody out there or people out there who might actually like what I'm putting out there but be put off because of that comment and it is their only uh, glimpse of me and it's not me in the light in which I want to be seen, I have to take it down and leave it up to the fates and see what else happens on this channel and what else, what video goes to the forefront and brings people to my channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and if you want to see how I got this look, please continue to watch and have a fantastic day. One more thing, I'm on Snapchat now and I love Snapchat because I get to like be silly and be ridiculous and put videos and pictures up and then they disappear in 24 hours. So none of it can be held against me in a court of law later on. So if you wanna see like my silly musings and my goings ons, please follow me on Snapchat at Wicked Wa, W-I-C-K-E-D-W-A. Uh, and also follow me on Instagram and all the other social media platforms that I have listed in the Dropbox below, okay? <laughs> Do it. I'm kinda of struggling right now with whether or not I should put on my foundation first or last. I don't know why it's such a conundrum right now. <laughs> I'm like really like, I don't know what to do. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. First I'm going to prime my lids with my Ruby Kisses eyeshadow primer because I have very oily eyelids and I don't want the oil to bust through. So for my eyeshadow base I'm using white NYX eyeshadow base. 
I'm just gonna blend it out because it seems I got a little too excited about it. Put it a little too far up. So my first color, I'm gonna go in with Old Gold. It is from the 2013 MAC Holiday Set. It is a pigment. I'm gonna pack that color on using a, I think this is a concealer brush by BH Cosmetics. With my eyes open, I'm gonna to check to make sure that the same amount of color is showing on one eye as it is on the other eye. I'm gonna take it about three quarters of the way. Sort of a copper color as well as a green, depending on which way I turn my head. So this for this tutorial, I'm going to add a green to the outer uh, quarter of my eyes, my outer V area, because I think it's gonna complement the gold really nicely. So for that green, I'm using Fergie's Wet n Wild Camouflage Couture Palette. And I'll be using this green here and this green here. I'm actually going to apply this one first and then this color second. Okay, so to now blend these two together, I'm going to be using an angled stippled brush and I'm going to use that lighter color to blend the two colors. Next, I'm gonna go in with my highlight color. I'm gonna be using Belayment on Midnight by NYX. Because I already have such shimmery lid colors, I'm gonna use a matte brow highlight. So for my crease color slash transition, I'm going to be using a color from the Missy Lynn palette and I'm using a blending brush. I'm gonna actually take this color from one edge of my eye all the way to the other. Guys, if you don't own the Missy Lynn palette, you really are missing out. She's got some fantastic colors in this palette. I mean, bravo to Missy Lynn and bravo to BH Cosmetics. I've never had a palette where I could use almost every single color and not feel crazy using them. But you should really consider getting that palette. It's fantastic. I'm going to use a darker purple from the Missy Lynn palette and I'm just gonna deepen my crease. Do my best to make sure they're even because I'm terrible at the symmetry. <laughs> When I do my eye makeup. Now I'm going to go in with Black Gel Liner by Maybelline and line my lids. So one of my biggest problems that I have when I do my makeup is that I don't blend out my eyeshadow as nicely as it could be. And I'm noticing a little weirdness in here. So I'm going to get a clean brush and I'm just going to go around and blend. It's actually perfect that I chose to put on my foundation later because the foundation will also help with this. You don't want any harsh edges and you don't want to make, you want your found, your eyeshadows to blend seamlessly into one another. You don't want to see where one stops and the other begins. So if you're having issues on the outside, you can also use a cloth to clean it. Again, but I said we're going to be putting on foundation, so foundation will take care of a lot of the fallout. Okay, so now that I have everything blended and as nice as I want it to be, I'm going to go in with my foundation. For my foundation, I'm going to be using Aqua BB Cream. I'm going to be using the color Dark and Medium Dark, mixing the two colors because I'm in between shades. First, I'm going to prime with my Maybelline Master Prime. So as you guys can see, I have some blemishes on my face and I want to show them to you so I can show you how well this foundation covers using equal parts and my expert blending brush by Real Techniques. I'm gonna stipple it on first, then I'm gonna go about blending it in. So for this look, I'm using these foundations because while I love my CoverGirl 3-in-1, it really isn't blendable because it turns into a powder so quickly. So for every day, it's perfect. But for these looks where I'm gonna be using quite full coverage and heavier concealers, 
I want to have a blendable foundation. Look how it covers. I almost don't know why this is called a BB cream because it really is just a full coverage foundation. Now I'm just gonna real quick do my eyebrows. You know, I really haven't been going in on my eyebrows lately. I've just kind of been like coloring them in and that's it. Normally, or in the past, I've gone over them with concealer to outline them and give them that perfect edge. But like, I don't care. They're not as amazing as I want them to be. I'm gonna admit that, but you know, they're fine. Unbreakable. They alive, damn it. It's a miracle. I'm gonna do with some more blending as I see fit up in here. There's a situation happening. So now I'm gonna go in with my concealer. I'm using MAC Pro Longwear in NW45. Little bit, a little bit. I always, I can't even put a full pump. I have to put like half a pump, but I don't want to do a heavy highlight today. I already feel like that's too much. <gasps> Every time. It's the circle of life. It's the circle. It's the circle of life. You look blended. I'm tired. I'm tired of blending. I'm tired. I'm tired. Just keep blending. Just keep blending, just keep blending. Okay, so to set this, I'm going to be using Ben Nye in Cocoa Tan. Okay, so I'm gonna let that bake on my face for a second. MAC Deep Brown. I'm gonna lightly put it on. And now I'm gonna blend it out with this brush. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. You got me feeling emotion. Okay, I feel pretty good about it. How you guys feel about it? You guys feel good about it? Good, let's move on. So now I'm gonna set my contour with Shea Moisture. Uh, illuminating powder because it brings illumination to my skin and I love illumination on the skin girl it makes it look healthy right and then I kind of just to blend everything together just go over the whole thing girl I love illumination girl I love illumination now let's go back to the eyes if you have any harsh lines around the sides and you don't want them you can just blend them out with that clean brush sometimes my finger works better and clean brush blending i don't always like a sharp line in fact most of the time i don't like a sharp line for my inner tear duct i'm going to be using the green the lighter green from the center stage camouflage couture color i'm going to be using this green if you want to, you can add white base to your lower lash line to let these colors pop, but I want them to be subtle. You know, I'm not painting for the back row. I'm painting for the front row. This color again that I use to blend and to use my crease with, and I'm gonna be adding that to the other part of my lower lash line. Then I have a purple eyeliner that I'm going to add to my bottom line, lash line as well. I have two options for my waterline. I could do like a beige or I could do a black. I feel like I want to do beige because I want to open my eyes up since this is a nice spring look. I bring it out a little bit because I feel like it opens it up better and bring it in a little bit. There are YouTubers who are so neat when they put on colors in their inner tear duct. I am not one of those people. Like I feel like it just goes everywhere. Sometimes I see the pictures and it's so precise and mine's just, they're not. So I'm gonna add mascara to my bottom and to my top. Okay, now time to add lashes. I'm using these Wisp lashes that I used. I have to be super careful. I already messed it up, but don't tell anyone. I'm just gonna stop there. So let's go back to my face and add some blush. I'm gonna be using Love Thing by Mac. Donde esta Love Thing by Mac? Ah, aquí. 
I found it. Raspberry by Black Radiant. I'm trying to get the rosy cheeks, girl. Come on. There we go. There she is. Okay, and to balance off all that blush, put it on the chin, put it on the forehead. Now I'm gonna go in with highlight, because I have a fan brush now. Again, my Missy Lynn palette. You haven't bought you a Missy Lynn palette yet, girl? Get you a Missy Lynn palette. I'm gonna go in with this rose gold. Just gonna dust that in there like that. DVD boot if you was my boyfriend. I mean, let's do our lips and let's not talk about this look anymore. This has been a journey for me. I'm gonna take chestnut all the way. I'm gonna go all the way with that chestnut sun, all the way. God, chestnut is so magical. And now I'm gonna go in with Touch by MAC. And maybe I'll add my tie on top of this. Or not. <laughs> but I want to, let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like with my tie on top. I mean, it isn't my most favorite. It's not my most favorite in the worldies, but I do like it. How about I do this? So this is the finished look, you guys. Thanks so much for coming on this journey with me. My name is Wahima. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in my next video.